of Gutfeld in Greg We Trust. Greg, it's so great to be here in person. I lo- I, I've missed you and your amazing good looks. <laughs> you just look so much better in person than you do on Zoom. I think you look great on Zoom, too. Why, thank you. What are you doing later? Uh, you know, um, the Greg New Deal, translate, what is it? Well, the thing is, we are, co- we are drowning in a sea of this weird catchphrase, po- left-wing political dogma. Those are the emissions we should be concerned about. <laughs> but the thing is, what, 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 when you mention the Green New Deal, what is it? The left has the benefit of creating things without data, right? But when you're on the right or you're in, involved in law enforcement or business, stats are everything. Like, we, you, you need to understand the economy. you got to look at statistics. Police brutality. We read the stats on that every day. The yeah, left absolutely. doesn't, right? Climate, we look at that. We realize that the, um, the predictions are off. And we, we look at them every year. We might believe that there's something there. Man, that, but, but look at the covers from the 70s and 80s yes, that predict exactly. world doom. And yeah. so we we have to, it's like every, it's, I, I, compared to the myth of Sisyphus, we have to wake up every morning and start over again to clean up the non-factual messes <laughs> that the left make. So what, here's the reason, my point to this is that because they don't, they're, they don't want to do data, they link everything to race yes. or climate. And in this case, now they're linking race and climate. They should just call it like racial change or or uh, or uh, climate racism. Just just put them together because yeah. that way, what happens is it causes everybody to freeze, and then you don't dare even bring up the data that you have. We see this with police brutality when we when we talk about the actual cases of unarmed men being yeah. killed. We know the numbers. Journalists can go every day and be done in a month and figure out what's going on, but they don't because that would kill the argument. It would. Uh, and it's also that because they care so much more than you, Greg, you're a heartless statistician. Mm-hmm. Their intentions are so much purer. Yes. Why does the outcome ultimately matter? Because it's ultimately a struggle. You heard it at the end of the quote. Issues of power, the Marxist idea of the oppressor and the oppressed. The power dynamics off, so you're wrong either way, Greg. Yeah, that's true. And I am heartless. I'll give him that. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's true. And, and again, it's it's they are commandeering this kind of language that is meant to kind of scare you from debate. And that is so it's like when they talk about power, and if you disagree, then you are the oppressor. You immediately, it, we are binary creatures, oppressor, oppress, left, right, and they stake out a place that puts them on the higher level, right? Mm-hmm. They're the compassionate, you are not the compassionate one. And to your point, if you bring up numbers, there's something wrong with you. How, like, how inhumane are you to actually look at stats? Well, if you don't look at the stats, you don't look at the economics, people die. Mm. Like, people die. If we had actually, look, take COVID, if we had actually focused completely on the people at risk, the elderly and the obese, fewer people would be dead rather than doing these blanket shutdowns on yep. everybody. Now, we probably did save lives, but we probably could have saved more if we were more specific in our targeting. But that requires data. And numbers, and nobody likes data. Nobody on the left, or no, it, it, I, that's not fair. You, it's the media. Well, how do you do the data on on climate? So we know exactly 20 years from now what the temperature is going to be, and so you must change your life right, right now. Right, right, and, and they can't tell you it in stats. And they, there's so many things they can't predict. They don't know what the GDP is going to be, blah blah blah. But they can tell you over 100 years there could be a hypothetical <laughs> increase. However, though, when you do look at what they're predicting. It's very small if you do nothing. It's like a, a, a few degrees Celsius going up. And, and by the way, we should do everything possible we can to keep bad things from happening. I'm with you. But we got to do it based on sound data. They say follow the science. But every time you follow the science and climate, it ends up wrong because these hypothetical models are always inaccurate. But we do. But we still only have 10 years left. Oh, yes. You and it, it, But this is why we get to spend all this money because we don't need the money because we're, we're going to be gone. I, I said the roaring 20s are going to lead to the dead 30s. Oh. Who cares anyway? Yes. My 30s were dead. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. Greg Gutfeld, we love you. I love you. Thank you, you for being the inaugural Fox News primetime this week on Set Guest. Oh, my pleasure. Oh, I didn't even know that. Put that on a plaque. I know, I know. I love it. You're the man. Appreciate Thank it. You. Up next, Will Kane.